is Wednesday, uh, the morning <clears throat> meeting of House Appropriations. And um, I, first I wanna say to the committee members, and I'm sorry, Linda is uh, working on a bill in commerce and I don't see Bob. And other than that, are we all here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Bob is eight, nine. Who are the other two we're missing? I should know my committee, but oh, Dave Iacovoni needs to be working on some healthcare things for his presentation. And then Linda, Dave, and um, oh, and I make a member too. I didn't count myself. Um, so first I wanna thank you for yesterday. That was incredible work. And I think we got some really good stuff out uh, to get money to you know, our healthcare provider groups, to Vermonters for supports and uh, between the housing and the human services pieces, uh, getting bro more broadband out in uh, the state and, um, and the, in the healthcare stabilization. It is all really, really good work. And um, we turned it around in less than two weeks. And that is, um, that's just remarkable. On top of getting out a supplemental BAA to close out uh, fiscal year 20 and getting out a quarter year bill, um, you guys deserve a little bit of a summer break and I, I'm telling you it's coming. I promise it's coming soon, but thank you. I can't thank you enough for your work. Um, today uh, we, we have um, the quarter one bill is on the floor of the Senate today and it will be coming over with some changes. We've heard of changes from Chip and from Peter, um, the judiciary pieces we've gone through higher ed, pre-K through 12. Um, Diane, the legislature pieces didn't go there. They went somewhere else. A few of you may have some other changes. I'm just trying to think uh, what they were. There's one more addition we're going to see on the Q1 bill. Um, Commissioner Gresham uh, sent out a note that there was um, uh, some need with UI administration costs. And Maria, do you want to just review that so that when we get the Q1 bill, we won't have to um, to okay. slip with it, we can understand yeah. it. Okay, so this document, um, it actually came from as an email, but I copied it in here to make it look so you could see the numbers. So um, we got this information, I think it was last week or the week before that last there's an week. addition, last week, okay, that there are um, additional UI admin costs that need to be covered um, by CRF funds. And this is not part of the first part of this email it says it's not part of the um, UI payments. It's, these are just strictly admin costs that are not covered with any other federal dollars. So if you would like to scroll down, Teresa, just a little bit so we can see the chart. So what I've done is I've highlighted, the chart unfortunately is a little bit bigger than um, what fits on the screen. Oops, okay, there you go, perfect, thank you. So I've highlighted the, um, in yellow, the UI admin costs that we're referring to, and they total about 4.63 million. The estimate of need, because things are fluid, is 4.7 million. And um, this includes um, the cost plus uh, some match for some FEMA money that uh, the administration can use for this purpose, but there's a 25% match. So there's a lot of things going on within this 4.7 million, but that's the estimate of need at this point. So um, what you'll see when you get the Senate bill is there's a section, and I need to get my eyes on it, but there's a section of that bill that takes um, it takes 4.7 million from the money that was set aside for the Joint Fiscal Committee to allocate that 225 million. There was uh, 47 million that was unallocated. So they've included some language that takes the 4.7 from that 47 million. And, um, and that's where it lives right now. So it's not bumping your CRF bottom line, it's taking it out of money that's set aside for the Joint Fiscal Committee. Okay, that was early on. That was some of the first uh, decisions that were made with emergency funding that were That's in right. one to cover the governor's emergency dollars that had already gone out. And then there was a second uh, bucket of money to address needs as they came along through the Joint Fiscal Committee. Um, are there any questions for Maria on 
uh, why we're doing it here, or uh, I got my screen back up for all of you. Oops. Um, of, of where we're taking the CRF monies, and uh, just under okay. CRF monies can be used for FEMA match. That was a ruling that they made. One ruling they got to us that was very positive. Any question on this? So it will not come from the dollars that the House and Senate are working with. It will come from the dollars that were set aside in the Joint Fiscal Committee. No questions? Yes, Peter. I do have a question. I had my hand yes. up. Oh, yes. I couldn't. No, I don't see a hand. Am I a co-host, okay. Teresa? Oh, I think I forgot to make you a co-host. Hang oh, on. Okay. Sorry, Peter. Oh. That's why I didn't. See. Okay. So we're not I'm blaming just... you, Teresa. <laughs> <laughs> It's so okay, Maria, Ken. <laughs> Maria, just a, a quick question. So you've got the two shaded areas is what you've been referring to. And then the, uh, with, and they are all UI admin. And I presume that's the reason why it cannot come out of the, the UI fund. Uh, and that's the reason why we're looking at a, uh, at a coronavirus uh, fund instead, which I'm fine with. The rest of it is UI vendors, UI mod, ADS, and ops. All of that is uh, capable to be drawn from the UI fund. So um, the UI fund has specific amount of money set aside for admin okay. and they've reached that oh. cap. And ah. the additional funds that we got from the federal government, this, um, the pandemic um, unemployment assistance, that's for self-employed uh, people. And then the federal pandemic unemployment compensation, the $600 um, yep. additional each week, that had some admin money attached to it, but it's all used up. It's, it's okay. uh, not available. Gotcha. So. Um, so that's why we're looking at the CRF funds. Okay, thank you. Uh, any other questions for um, for Maria? I see Marty. Yes. So those middle expenses that are not highlighted, they're all admin stuff. But are you saying they are covered by admin that was part of the UI fund or the federal UI allocation? So the um, the things that are not highlighted. Um, I don't have a lot of information on that. We were just focusing on the UI admin piece. Um, I can definitely get you more information. I'll ask um, finance if they could shed some light on that. Um, what I'm thinking is that those costs are co Oh, shoot. Um, Maria, I lost you and I'm wondering what? what's me. Maria, did we lose you or? I yeah, I lost getting... her. I lost Maria too. Yeah, you know, I'm sorry. It's funny because I just got a phone call from Steve in the middle of that. And so I had to decline it. <laughs> so I don't, that's why that's why you lost. <laughs> okay. Um, he must not be on right now. Um, yeah, those those costs, the um, things that start under the green shade, the UI vendor costs, I'll find out a little more information on that. My what I gleaned from this email is that those costs are covered within the funds that they have for UI, but I can okay. get you more information on what that is. Thank you. Mar okay, well, I just want to make sure that they're already covered somehow. Okay, they sure, absolutely, yep. Worry about those. Yep. Okay. Thank you, thank you, Marty. Any other questions for Maria? So when we get the Q1 bill and we go through it, Maria, if you have, um, you know, if you can bring that information back at that time, sure. it'd be great. Yes, okay. Um, so I believe this is the only piece that we hadn't gone over uh, regarding changes to the Q1 bill. Chip, do you have, uh, or Peter, do you have any update from the uh, Education Committee? I know that they were working hard with um, uh, their counterparts on the other side to, to solve any in the Q1 bill. Do you know where that started up? I haven't seen anything, Chip, of you. No, no. Um, I'm writing one email now, and I was actually planning to try to get um, one off to. Uh, the chair this morning. Just to, I think to a further in. amendment was going to be needed to try to do the amendment on their side today and not do it on the floor because that just slows up getting these dollars out. So we're trying to. Okay, Steve, you yes. call me right yeah. back. That was their intent. Um, yeah. And, and okay. I'm still open as soon as you know, that would be great if you could inform yeah. the committee so that when we go through the bill, we'll know the committees of jurisdiction are all set. And Mary, if you would, I think it's, um, or Chip, who has um, the one section we want to make sure house corrections and institutions, or is it judiciary that needs to um, know about the, the Senate piece that was added uh, regarding um, 
regarding help for uh, battered women, um, more services for battered women who have been incarcerated, I believe. That's, that's Chip and that's Judiciary. I sent okay. a note to Alice and Butch about the DOC stuff. Okay. So Chip, you'll follow up on that one Senate piece with the, the groups that um, need to weigh in, please. Um, yes, but I'm, I think I'm a little confused. So the, as I understood what we were talking about yesterday, it was already in the, the um, judiciary proposals for the network. In the House Judiciary or Senate? Yes, in the House. House. No, I think there was one new piece that the Senate was adding onto their bill. I think there's an additional piece. Um, and Maria can, I think Stephanie was working on that. Maria, will you find out what the one piece I think what, that was added on so that uh, Chip can uh, work with his committees to make sure they're all set? Okay, yes. Um, there is a summary sheet that um, I think, uh, I think Teresa may have sent it around last night, but we'll make sure you yep. get that. Okay, okay. Well, uh, there were several of them that came from the House side and I believe there was one small uh, piece that, that was uh, added on on the Senate side that I want to just make sure we circle back on. Are you and talking, Kitty, in, of COVID dollars or? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. These are all COVID dollars. So um, uh -huh. just then okay. not to close the loop here. So um, somebody's going to send that memo or do we already have it? I, I just need to know where to go look for the information. Maria will circle back with you after she reaches out to Stephanie. Okay. They have that HVAC stuff in the Senate one. Yep, they're yeah, all they're all over education. that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Chip and like, chips yeah, all I'll over go. that piece. Uh, yes. So we'll just check in with Maria Chip. That's yep. what I would do. Okay. Maida? Um, yeah. Um, this isn't in um, the COVID section of the phase one budget, but I do believe in the earlier section. Um, the Senate has added some language re with regard to pensions, um, and um, it's basically mm -hmm. clarifying that um, there's authorization to invest the uh, the money that's in the state employees OPEB and the retired teachers uh, post employment um, funds. So uh, thank you, Meta, and I believe um, that came from the treasurer's office. And Teresa, could you get the treasurer on for about ten minutes um, before we get the quarter one bill to to hear about that? Sure. So, what was the question? I'm sorry, I was looking for chips. The pension, stuff, which... the, the, pension the, the the addition of the pension language authorizing investment of the post employment benefit monies. Okay. A thirteen. Thank you. And there's. And there's another piece relating to the treasurer um, authorizing her to invest a higher amount than, uh, than we had in the community loan fund. Okay. Oh, and there's another little piece where we had the full amount of the administration costs for the pensions in our bill and in the Senate version, there's only 30%. 30% okay. of what? Tell me. Of the full cost to administer the three pensions. <clears throat> In other words, keeping the oh, rest. Oh, okay. So we need to hear from the treasurer on that. This is the quarter bill, right? Yes. Okay. Thank you. And so, uh, Representative, so we need like more think, than ten minutes. Okay. And I think um, I think that everything you're looking for um, will be in if you go in the OneDrive. Um, and I can send you anything out of there if you're not able to access it through your iPad, but there is a folder for the quarter one bill. It's called phase one. Thank and, you. Um, it's called uh, H961. It's the A2 folder right on the top when you go into the House of Probes folder. Phase, it's FY21 phase one transition bill. And in there is a Senate mm -hmm. folder for everything that is going to the Senate. So the UI piece, the three um, pieces regarding the treasurer we need to circle back with, pre-K through 12, higher ed, micro businesses, and adult days. Does anybody else? Oh, and there's that one, uh, that one judiciary piece uh, on the Senate side, Chip, you'll follow up on. And is there anything else anyone has heard about or know they were working on? 
I can I jump in, Kitty? Sure, Mary. I'm sorry, but Nada has her hand up. I should have. Uh, I think that's from before. Um, Peter, you yesterday said that you saw some rogue piece about jails and population of the women's facility. Yes. That's the language I'm talking about for Chip. Chip. Oh. The, the piece that okay. yeah it was about incarcerated women, I believe, uh, and it had to do with um, I, and it may not have been. It may be. Um, battered women but um there was a lot of battered women and there was also we had stuff for training within the south burlington facility right that, but that's it, it, not new it, no right. no i'm talking about a new senate piece yeah. uh, there's okay. a new senate piece okay so, so that you, you will circle around with mary if it includes uh boc please Yes, I, I definitely will. Um, and I think that the thing that Peter was talking about yesterday, I heard the read the exact same language, and I'm pretty sure it was maybe in an intent section or something around the the um, network's proposal. So I'll find it later if I can. But um, meanwhile, I'll find out about the Senate piece. Okay. Thank you, Diane. Thank you. To unmute myself. Um, are we going to talk about the things that aren't there? These are the things that are in there. Are there things that are not in there that we had put in? It's the not negative. That, of not that I am aware of. Not that I am aware of. Um, but when we get the walkthrough, uh, we will okay. learn that. But I am not aware of that. OK. OK. Thank you. So I think that we're ready when we get the quarter one bill. It sounds like we can stitch it up pretty quickly. Um, the bill's on the floor today. Um, I hope, you know, I know you're all prepared. You know your sections. I do want to clarify um, so that we're all on the same page. The additional monies that were put in, we had the 1.25. The speaker had set aside monies in phase two, phase two also some monies for uh, to address lost revenue, um, as was addressed in the education bill with the shortfall in education. Um, due to what's happening in Washington, it doesn't appear that any decisions are going to be made in June and July, and uh, Congress will probably not act on changing any guidance or on a HEROES Act for more additional money or anything else until very late July or early August when we will have returned. And so the monies that were set aside in um, Tier 2 um, have become uh, available for use because uh, we were hoping to get information of, you know, with guidance change if we could address lost revenue. Uh, so that's one piece, but also we do not have an official forecast, but our economists are, are tracking what's happening. And so unofficially, our numbers are still in the red, but they're moving in the right direction toward black. And so um, that has freed up some money if, if we choose to move um, uh, with those unofficial projections. And so that is where um, there was no um, hidden money in anyone's pocket. Believe me, it's, it's all out there and it's all being tracked. It was the tier two and uh, some good news as our economy uh, starts to spring back. Uh, Bob and Mary. Yeah, yeah, Kitty. Um, I'm just trying to um, remember whatever happened with that transportation issue of five million, two million to the Ed Department, and three million. The three million. The three where, million where is that? Uh, Kurt took it to Mike Marcotte, and they're working on it as part of the Commerce Bill. Well, I thought I picked that up, and I. I thought Linda and I were supposed to work on it. Actually, we did, and and then it just kind of fizzled out. And... Yep, you 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 need to continue to track it, but uh, along with other things, uh, other things that went to commerce. Uh, uh, I I mentioned that at one meeting, and you may have been at your doctor's appointment, um, and I apologize if that's when I mentioned it. That when I had a conversation with Mike Marcotte, he said that he was already looking at that piece. Uh, with Kurt. And so um, 
I gladly let them have it, but you certainly need to be continued to continue to be part of those discussions if it's um, well, it's really not team money. It was um, CRF money that was just assigned for them to use. But yeah, that yeah, yeah, that's all it was. I, I, don't, I don't really don't care, but I just one. You do. One, I think. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, okay, thank okay, you. Okay, so that's where it is. Check in with Mike Marcotte or with Kurt, and they are following up on those conversations. And I apologize, Bob, if I went over that. And I know you were out a few times for just a short period. And that's what they have um, uh, brought right. it up. Right. Uh, Mary and Marty? Uh, Kitty, I don't think I fully tracked what you were saying regarding federal actions and uh, tier two money. Can you just summarize that again, please? Sure. The speaker had set aside tier two money in case the federal government um, in June or early July made some decisions regarding um, the use of CRF money and, it, and if it could be used to backfill revenue. Um, it appears now from conversations um, that the speaker's office has had with our federal delegation that no decisions are going to be made in time for if we're gone, we were going to leave instructions, you know, a kind of a list to get this money out the door. Um, they are, there does not appear that there will be any action at the federal level until early August. And then we, our committee will be back shortly after that. So the significance of that is we don't need to figure out the list of what to do with the tier two. You weren't no. saying that it is now available to spend. Tier two, well, we sent a, we spent we a hundred, spend a hundred on healthcare. Yeah, yeah we yeah. spent 96, yeah. almost 96 million on healthcare. Yeah. Tier two is off the table because the federal government isn't going to provide any information for us that would have allowed us to um, to do our tier two plan. So we're holding off till August. Yeah, but we're also releasing some of that tier two money we were holding on to. That's what I'm trying to understand. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And we used a chunk of it yesterday. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Marty? So that was the same question I had. Does that mean we have additional funds that we should be appropriating now as part of whatever, before we leave, before mm -hmm. June 30th, so that we will use up most of what we were calling tier two, which we now, now no longer believe we need to hold on to. And I'm right. delighted to hear that, but I would like to appropriate that money. And I, I'm wondering if there are plans for how to do that. Are we going to add uh, more into commerce as an example, or do you know? Uh, yep, yeah, uh, there's there's two big pieces that are still hanging out there. The commerce bill is not complete. And so I, I think that um, the Commerce Committee uh, will be uh, working on identifying those needs and, and dollars that are needed. And we also have uh, an ag bill that hasn't moved yet as well. And um, so those are the two larger pieces. The other thing that we have to do is, um, the priorities of the House and Senate never line up completely. Um, and um, the Senate has a, a hazard pay bill out there with, a, uh, I think it's a $60 million hazard pay bill. And I'm not sure where that's going to land in the end either. So there, the, um, so there, there needs to be some, uh, there's, there needs to be some to, um, to use to negotiate back and forth with priorities of the House and the Senate, because if we have a high priority and we used all of our funds, then we don't have anywhere to go. Um, but also, um, what was I going to say? Oh, also in the education bill, we did set aside money if there's change in federal guidance to take pressure off the property taxes. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it was, was it a hundred million that we set well, aside? Well, no. Well, was not off the property that? taxes. It's off borrowing. Uh, well, Kitty, we well, also have a bill okay. on our wall. Well, so we send it as well. Just uh, let, Marty, let Marty finish yeah. and, die, and then I'll jump to you. Okay. Well, I, so do we think that some of these various loose ends will come together and get resolved before the end of next week so well, that we so. have expended yeah. 
most of the 1.2 billion? Um, yes, uh, and and what that total is that we don't expend is a bit of a moving target, and it's for two pieces. One would be for to help with lost revenue in the general fund. Uh, we were up to 278, then it moved to 250, then it moved to like uh, 202. So we're in about the 200 million dollar range. And as Friday comes, we will have a new target. Um, about what that what that uh, gap is in the general fund, and I believe the Ed Fund. Um, uh, I've got to check. I, I I've got to check on the new number for the Ed Fund. We may be below two hundred now, uh, in the gap that's projected for the general fund. We may be in the one hundred fifty to two million dollar range, and then I think the Ed Fund was in the hundred million dollar range, and. Um, Right. So, and and then whatever the construct is at the end, whether we put them, you know, you know, I'm not suggesting any of these. I'm just putting the constructs out there. If there's a gap in the Ed Fund, it either gets, you know, a loan that's paid back, uh, we run a deficit, or we just increase property taxes. You know, there's there's several mechanisms that the legislature will have to um, uh, will have to consider. But one hope is, is that, in, and our federal delegation keeps saying there's strong hope there, or I should say hope uh, there, that, that the guidance will change that could take the pressure off that education gap and some off the general fund gap. So I think well, that okay. it's not appetite to spend every penny not knowing what the rules are going to look like. Mm -hmm. We were hoping in June but now we hear they're not going to make these actions until August or end of July. Okay. Well, I thought the Ed Fund was decided that there was gonna be a gap of 140 and we were just literally going to have to borrow the money because they set the tax rate. So we're not gonna increase the tax rates. Right, I, I don't know. Um, so at, I had any rate. Janet, what the mechanism is to address the gap. If we've, if we've decided okay. on mechanism to address the gap. That's what I'm not clear about. Mm -hmm. um, so I would just advocate for reserving as little as possible. I want thank to you. spend it. And I will I, I would never on. normally say that, but I want to spend it. Boy, how boy how the tables can turn sometimes where I want to save, save, save. <laughs> no, it's important. I know. Normally I would. <laughs> um I, I think that I think that it will be very clear. I we we should be by the time we leave next week because I don't think we can get out by Friday. By the time we leave next week, a, a billion dollars at least should be out the door. That that's what. Our, our, and don't stick. Don't hold me to an exact number. Uh, you know, but I think around that amount uh, of a billion dollars should be out the door. Um, okay. And, Thank you. Uh, were you done, Marty? I'm sorry. I don't want to. Uh, Diane? Yes, done. I'm done. I've, I've just been jogging. We also have, and I'm sure it's a part of a bigger plan, but I just don't want us to forget that we we actually have possession of S349, the yeah. municipal bill that government ops is taking taking a look at, and that's probably one of those Senate House mm -hmm. come to Jesus moments. Yeah. 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 And um, so uh, that's a good point. I know uh, House Government Operations is working on uh, possible language to change or add or do something in, in 349. Um, who does municipalities? Who has, who has uh, that kind of budget? Uh, uh, maybe Kitty? Something for me? Kitty? I would, Kitty? Yes. Meta? Um, Lord, Kitty? Um, it's Maida. You had asked me to keep, yes, you had asked me to keep an eye on that particular bill. And so now let me I'm take gonna, my video off. Maybe that'll help. Can I give you a, this, so, so you, you had asked me to keep an eye on H349 over in GovOps, which I have been doing. Um, and they have been taking extensive testimony this week, including today, they've got quite a long list. I've been after um, the vice chair to let me know how much in addition to their authorized $10 million for um, Corona relief, how they had 10 million, which they intended to put toward this bill, 
I've been after him to tell me how much more is needed because at one point I'd heard they needed a total of 16 million for that bill. But John said he'd try to get back to me uh, today with a clearer idea as to how much in addition to the 10 million they will need. Does that help? Yep, thank you. And so with their policy, they will match the dollar need with the policy. What I would like you to do, Maida, because we're, we're trying to create packages here. Can you, yes. uh, I, I need, um, and maybe Maria can help with this, the total number of dollars so that we know that go, that has gone out and will go out to municipalities. Because sometimes when oh. we do this in little pieces, we don't keep track of the total. And so mm -hmm. we need to have that total um, to go out to our communities. Uh, and it, is Maria on so that she, oh, there she is. Yeah, so you, you're you okay. making a note and I'm making a note. We'll, so you, yes, we'll so you would like to know, that. yeah, a list of what's been done already for municipalities. Is that yep. correct? Okay. Okay. Yep. Okay. Um, I need, right, I just got to put so, a note in my calendar here. Okay. Yeah, total there, just so I remember to come back to that. All right. And then um, ag, it, we're coming back at 1.30 to do the ag bill on the Senate side. And um, as we've been doing these packages, this ag bill that will run through our committee. Uh, Chip is the lucky person that has the ag budget. He is going to, um, and we're going to give him maybe a present. Um, I, it, uh, I'm lucky to have the ag line or something. He's going to work with Senate Ag and House Ag, and um, and hear uh, both sides and try to uh, help them uh, take their policy pieces and uh, come up with a bill um, that they both can agree upon. And so Chip, you're going to be working on that. So if any of you, and I've already made my phone call, if any of you have priorities or thoughts about the direction of this bill, get to Chip this morning or, you know, before, you know, by the end of the day today. We've heard Carolyn's presentation and we'll, um, we will hear from Mike O'Grady, the Senate um, proposal. And um, so, don't wait until the proposal, until there's an agreement, get to Chip today or by the end of the day with any of your thoughts on ag. So as he works uh, with the two committees, uh, our thoughts are at, on the table. Um, by the way, my phone doesn't seem to be working. So um, you should definitely email me or I'm happy to give you my home phone, but don't don't message, text me. Yep. Or, or telepathically, we can just glare at you now and tell you, you know, some of our priorities or, you know, things that we'd like to see within the package. Uh, Chip well, is on a forestry. Do you want to talk about that, uh, Chip? It was a sector uh, that hasn't been included. Do you want to talk about that a bit? Yes. Um, so uh, I've been in recognition that um, that the forest products industry. Um, which has really suffered um, in part, well, in large part, because of the, um, the loss of demand for paper during the COVID pandemic, um, uh, that there's been a real um, impact on folks who supply that kind of um, pulpwood, basically, and others farther down the chain because of the way the, the supply chain works uh, in, the, in the forest products industry. So, um, I was just in recognition of the, the fact that there hasn't been, hadn't been any proposals for um, how to help them out. I was trying to figure out something. I've been working with Mike Snyder and Sam Lincoln from the, from Forest and Parks uh, and Meta has um, jumped right in too to um, help us try to figure this out. Um, and so we're trying to bring forth a proposal that's in the five, $5 million range um, to see if there's something we can do. My suggestion to them has been to maybe model it on the dairy proposal where you say, um, compare previous periods before COVID incomes to what's happened during the COVID period, um, and then just try to create a very simple grant program to help them weather this um, by making up the difference. Um, that's you know, it's it's last minute. Um, it's been uh, Mike and Sam are are working hard to try to 
bring forth some details. I think Mike Snyder is actually testifying in Senate Ag at this moment, trying to get them on board with doing this. Um, Wedge Council um, has just very recently been informed that this may be coming. So, you know, it's all like anything we're trying to do right at this moment. Um, we're trying to get it together quickly. Um, uh, but that's, that's where we are. Thank you, Chip. So Meta, you'll, you'll, um, you will be uh, in line with Chip to, to work on the, the forest pieces and committee members know to get things to Chip. Mary? Thank you. I'm really glad you're trying to expand who has access to this pot of money. And I, I've just been, so I'm doing my usual thing of sharing my anxiety with the committee. Um, just thinking about equity across all businesses that have lost income. And, you know, I, assuming there are on the order of 700 dairy farms um, in Vermont, I mean, if you just do the math, so much more money is going to flow into that sector under some of the proposals we've seen. So I'm glad you're spreading it out so more people have access to it. I, I, I continue to worry about an equity issue because there are a, a other businesses that will see nothing of this degree of support um, that are equally facing, you know, closing businesses, lost dreams, change to our community. And, I, you know, so there, you have my anxiety. Uh, I, I'm not sure what to do about this, but, but I, I, perhaps part of what I'm saying is I would not support seeing even more money going into the ag piece at the detriment of other money that we're putting into commerce for all of those other communities that are equally desperate. Thank you for doing the forestry piece. That's a big one, Chip. Good work. And, well, we'll Thank you, Mary. Uh, Maida? Uh, yeah, uh, following up on what Mary said, uh, the larger Maida, picture want to cut off of your which video. Mary is speaking, not solely the forestry piece. Stop my video. Okay. Well, you you were and a I little- apologize. I apologize. Okay, is this better? That's better. Okay, there's liable to be a lot of background sound. There's activity at the airport right now with certain airplanes taking off. Um, so in any case, uh, following up on what Mary said, not particularly with regard to forestry, but the larger picture of which she was speaking with regard to um, uh, equality of access, I know, I know I am just compelled to say, even though I know the arts and cultural organizations do have the capacity uh, and, and are expected to apply for some of the money that's being that's being put out of commerce in their bills, I know that from their perspective, they're feeling as if they're at the end of the line, and I I just feel the need to to verbalize um, their anxieties in, in this with you folks, because um, they technically do have the opportunity, but they're not feeling the love, so. Thank you, Maida. Um, so just to recap, we'll be back at 1.30 and we will hear the Ag Bill uh, from Mike O'Grady at 1.30. And following that, all members, um, and if somebody could get this message to Dave and to uh, Linda, if they have any ag issues, forestry issues, get those out to Meta and to Chip as soon as possible because they will be working with uh, the two committees of jurisdiction on either side to, to uh, hammer out the, the two proposals. Um, ag, uh, uh, the quarter one bill is coming back over. We've talked about most of the pieces. I'm sure there'll be a hidden gem somewhere that we'll need to uh, look at and uh, so be prepared to get the quarter one bill turned around if you have any uh, pieces that you need to talk with other committees of jurisdiction on. S349 MEDA is following 
and we will have a recommendation from GovOps either later today or tomorrow. And Teresa, you're going to schedule in the treasurer, so that's a Q1 piece. It's available tomorrow morning between 9 and 9.30. So I told her 10, minute, 10 minutes, she's going to come well, right Well, actually, up. we may need it. I, there were three pieces after that, the pieces total. So I bet she'll need the 9 to 9.30, the half hour. Okay. You, Teresa. And um, I think that's it, except Bob, you have a question? or a... Yeah, are we on the floor at 10 o'clock? 10 o'clock, and the, the bills that we passed out are going to be um, addressed today, I believe. Will the housing broadband be done today or not? And, and that Mitzi, uh, what I heard, this, what the speaker said was that they would not be taken up today, that instead we will focus on the um, melded human services and health care bill. Health care bill. Okay, perfect. And, and that's this afternoon, not this morning. Yep, that's at 2 o'clock. So what are we doing at 10? There must be a bunch of other bills on at 10. St. Albans Well, we just meeting. got an email from Mitzi that, that what the lineup is this morning at 10. Well, what is it? Eleanor Charter, annual state land transaction, board of medical practice, change in laws related to vehicles. Well, that would be your interest. All, all the little stuff. Yeah. yeah. All the junk. Yeah. Well, <laughs> well, they're important. I, right. in, important. in Elmore, that would be important, Bob. Yeah, probably. I think we're in pretty good shape. I'm feeling good. I don't know about you guys, but. No, I, don't I, say it out loud. Don't say it out loud. <laughs> Okay. Teresa, did you say you put the put something on the OneDrive memo? So I have all the Senate stuff in a folder under Senate, and I sent you the path by email. Okay, thanks. Get there. If you don't find what you're looking for, um, Maria and I will connect after this to make sure we have everything in there that you'll need. But uh, I think what you're looking for is in there. Thank you very much. Marty? It is the intent to have the new commerce package attached to housing and technology bill? Or I don't, will that be separate? I don't know the answer to that. Um, I'm thinking that the, I'm thinking they will go separately. That's what I'm thinking. Oh, okay. But I, okay. I you know, things can change. I'm not sure. So, but at this point, I think they're going separately, but that could change. So the last time we talked, that was going to be a floor amendment. So that's not the plan anymore. I don't, I don't know. Okay. I, I, I'm not sure what's yeah. going to happen. Um, a floor amendment. Yeah. I thought that was the, don't Maybe. trust me. I, yeah. you know. I don't know. I'm not sure. Yeah. I'm not sure. Kimberly? Well, does it have to come to us? Uh, the commerce Just bill. The commerce, new commerce package? Yes, absolutely. It has to come it to us. It will have to come to us. Mm -hmm. right. Yep, that's why Linda is there so that um, she can keep bringing back the pieces. Right. So it's not a, a big surprise to us. So um, yes, it will come to us and then we will get it out and hopefully we can turn it around quickly. Uh, Kimberly. Yeah, just one more piece that um, is also incoming will be the uh, housing services language. Uh, right now, the human services bill is focused on today's bill, and so I'm waiting for some clarification, but just want to remind people that that uh, will be coming as well. Okay. Uh, we'll do that this afternoon, Kimberly. Uh, I don't know that it would be this afternoon because of the human services bill on the floor. So I'll have to be in touch with you um, as the day progresses and maybe something is um, clear to log jam that I just haven't heard yet. Okay. Yep. I have to do DCF housing. That's hanging up. I forgot about that. Thank you, Kimberly. Okay. Um, and I've got to put down the economic development bill. So we have a few more things hanging than I thought. Okay, that's good. We'll see you at 10 o'clock on the floor back here at 1.30 and then 2 o'clock on the floor again.